The Great War through a London child's eye. 28th October 1914. Received first letter from father. Strange to think that he is only a few miles away, training hard with his regiment. Drill for hours and hours, he says. Even though he is not a gentleman, he is set to be an officer. That is one of the men in charge. I told our housekeeper, Mrs. Parry, all about it. Soon father will be at the front, like her John is. I am so proud, Mrs. Parry, and pleased too, because it says in the boys' own paper that officers get the very smartest uniforms and the best equipment of all. That's a blessing, then, Edward. Our John said in his letter that they're running out of fabric to make all the uniforms, so new Tommy's arriving at the front look quite absurd. Tartan trousers, jackets too small. <laughs> Although I don't see how it matters. As long as they're warm, poor dears, with the weather on the turn. Well, Mother and the ladies at church have been listening like fury to send comforts to the front. You know, scarves and socks, things like that. They'll need them. Over for Christmas. My foot. And Mrs. Parry, uniform is extremely important, you know. Our master at school tells us without uniform, there can be no discipline. And an army without discipline is done for. If you say so, dear. Talking of which, I see your new scouting uniform arrived. How smart you will look. Quite a little soldier yourself. My scouting uniform certainly is awfully smart. Hat with a big brim, cream shirt and neckerchief. Shorts to my knees, long socks and shoes shine so you can see your face. I have a woollen uniform for school too. I wear a suit rather like father's with a boater hat like his and an Eton collar. That just means it sticks up. I don't expect Mrs. Parry to understand about the uniforms. At the school near here, where her boys went, they don't wear uniform at all. They just wear their own clothes. The girls wear long dresses to their knees and blouses with high collars. The dresses are light coloured and very pretty. The sisters of the fellows I go to school with wear bright white pinafores over the top and smart buttoned boots. The girls playing in the street near Sydney's house do not have as many pretty colours to wear and, well, are not as neat. Some of them do not even wear shoes. They still like to wear ribbons and bows in their hair, it seems. The boys round here wear shirts without a collar and a pullover over the top. We all wear hats. Normally I would wear my school cap or a boater hat like father. Poorer boys wear caps and real toffs wear a top hat. Today I am proud to be sporting my new scouting cap. It is drawing quite a lot of attention. Not all of it good. Like your hat, Governor. Oh. Looks like a coconut. Oh. Here, if I knock it off, will I get a prize? Do you get think? off it! Go on. I'll box your ears, you little... T- Sydney. Thanks, old man. My pleasure. Although, you do look like a right little spiv. New scouting uniform? Quite the hat on that costume. <laughs> hey, where did you get that hat? Where did you get that towel? Isn't it a lovely one? And just the proper style. I would like to have one half as nice as that. Wherever I go, they let me know where did you get that hat. Shut up. Anyway, talking about Spivvy, I could say the same to you. New cap? One of father's. Mother said, what with that weather getting chilly, she'd rather my head was warm than them looking all sad on the hook. Hats can't look sad. She just misses the old man. So do I, but not for long. I'll be there on the front with Father and John in a matter of weeks, I tell you. Cavalry let you join up, did they? You would have been so proud of me, Edward, my son. I walked right in there to the Donkey Wallopers depot and I asked them where to sign. And when they said you were too young? I acted all angry and I said I was 21 if I was a day. And my diminutive stature was because I came from a long line of jockeys. I said my father won the 1899 derby on a horse with a backward leg. And if they put me on any old nag they want and give me a revolver, I'll gallop right up to the Kaiser and finish him myself. Oh, Sydney, they never swallowed that, did they? Well, what do you think? I'm here, aren't I? Never mind, Sydney. Hey, if you do manage to join up, you will have to wear a uniform for the first time. How will you like that? No one, and I mean no one, would look more dapper in khaki than yours truly, Edward. That's the only costume I've got my sights on. (laughs) The Great War, through a London child's eye. Supported by the National Lottery, through the Heritage Lottery Fund.